Hey everyone, and welcome back to another post from r slash malicious compliance, the subreddit where people follow the rules with a vengeance. Today's post. My crappy boss will forever regret trying to bring the thunder. The backstory. I started working in care of the elderly before I graduated school at age 17 as a temp worker. And after I graduated, I basically worked full time for several years finally got a steady employment at the age of 23. I take pride in my job, and even though I didn't study medical stuff, I've always made sure I knew everything I needed to know to do a good job with online classes, certificates, reading up on medications, treatment recommendations, etc. Everything was going well, despite me having four different bosses in the first five years of work. No one wants to be the boss here. Economically speaking, it's a sinking ship, since it's government-run and dependent on tax money. Then, friendly boss Lena joins the story. She asked me to move over to a new department the state was now, by law, obligated to provide short-term care. She had previously run the emergency care unit at the local hospital, and she didn't take crap from anyone. She let us workers build up and run the department because, as any good boss should, she realized that we knew better what we were doing because we were doing it day to day and what worked best for us, as long as we stuck within the laws, regulations, staff requirements, and budgets, of course. Everything was amazing for almost two years. Every month, I did the schedules for all 15 of the workers. I did daily planning for all the patients. I was in charge of all the documentation and all the new guidelines and protocols being implemented since the care provided was brand new in our area. Then the day of the great sadness came when Lena declared that she was leaving since she'd been offered a job as the head chief of the local hospital. All of us were devastated to see her go, but I mean, good for her. That's when super bitch Kesa enters our story. She was already the boss of the normal elderly care units where I'd worked before. I'd already moved on to short-term care before she was hired as the boss there, and we had heard exclusively bad things about her. We heard she would always do what she thought was the right thing to do, which was almost exclusively wrong because she was underqualified, had no experience from the actual work, and was just a bitch in general. Our first staff meeting, she told us, either you're with me or against me, and the people who are against me, I drown in the local lake. Okay, great start. I then tried to explain to her that with our previous boss, we'd worked with trust, since Lena had an understanding that us workers actually knew what works best in her own department, and Kesa instantly shut it down. Kesa, no. I'm the boss. I set the protocols. I decide how my departments run. Me? Yeah, of course. But I'm just saying, we've been working like... Kesa, no. I'm the boss. I'm in charge. And so it began. Kesa started changing the schedules, the protocols, the staff requirements, the daily rehab schedule, the food schedule. Not joking, by the way. And she lowered the required medical competence to work at our unit. This means there were people working with us who had no prior experience in the job, had no prior experience in the field, barely spoke the language, etc. Keep in mind, we had dementia evaluation, palliative care, or end-of-life care, stroke rehabilitation, and so on. Cue the malicious compliance. Cases started to try to micromanage everything we did, literally everything. She canceled all the activities we did for the whole business, like pub nights for the elderly, movie nights, summer cafe outdoors, walks, store visits, everything, all without cost to the business. She stated that we're no longer allowed to finish the schedules on our own and gave us two weeks less to finish them, which means we now have one week to input the schedule, try to settle it between us 15 people, and then hand it to her. She'd finish it and hand it to us the day before it went into effect. 
and 8 out of 10 days, the shifts weren't covered. Or we, there were 6 people working the same weekend when it was supposed to be 3. So I told Kesa that I'd been managing the schedule for years and was happy to keep doing it and that she'd still have it two weeks early. Nope. I told her that our activities were 100% within paid hours and no strain on the day-to-day -day normal business and we want to keep doing them. Nope. I told her that we'd prefer to keep doing things as we'd been doing them for years because it worked very well. Nope. Obviously, I was pissed. So were my coworkers, but they never spoke up. That was my job, I guess. There were a lot of incidents that I'm not going to bother bringing up, but just imagine that anything we ever wanted to do for our patients or the people in the dementia units or for the well-being of the staff was just no. One thing that had been consistent since I started working there when I was 17 I'm 27 at this point in the story, is that when you apply for vacation or any kind of leave, you input the leave request and then you request a temp to cover your shift and then you inform your boss that you've done both of those things. It's always been like that. Always. So I did. I requested a day's leave. My mom had a doctor's thing in a town a few hours from here. I input the temp request and then I walked to my boss's office and informed her. She loses it. Maybe because Case's boss was there? I don't know. But she starts yelling, telling me that I'm not allowed to request temps. That's her job. I stand there and take it like a good employee and just say, okay, won't happen again. Big surprise for her. When the next staff meeting comes around, there suddenly wasn't any staff on the actual ward, and a local politician was sat waiting with her mother, who was being committed to my ward that day for over two hours. I wonder who made sure they were arriving at that time on that day. Wink, wink. I told my boss's boss exactly why there weren't any temps scheduled for the meeting. Kesa got fired. Will make me smile for the rest of my life. And that's going to wrap up today's post. Malicious compliance stories can be so satisfying sometimes. Let us know your thoughts. We would love to hear them in the comments below. If you liked the video, please leave a like or a comment. It always helps us out a lot. And if you'd like to hear more and see more posts from r slash malicious compliance and other subreddits when they come out on the channel, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching and for listening.